That's all right. That's all right. We all have loose wires, Michael. And that's, that's what grace is all about. So I'm going to keep talking. Uh, just a couple of announcements real quick. Uh, if you are going to Young at Heart, please see um, Liz after worship. Also, uh, next Sunday, or next Saturday, doors open at 530, uh, our celebration of 190 years of ministry is happening. I would come. It's going to be a, a wonderful celebration of all the ministries that have gone on here at Fields United Methodist Church. It's also going to be a good time of fellowship, a great time of eating. Uh, it is a, a, a bring a dish to share. Uh, if you're coming or if you're bringing a dish, there's going to be a clipboard passing around too, so please make sure you put your name down and what you're, what you're bringing. Good morning. I wanted to bring your attention to a flyer that is in your bulletin, and um, this is about an event that's going on in two weeks, on the 18th, in the evening, Sunday evening, 6 to 8 p.m., our youth group, Ignite Youth Culture, would like to invite you all to a family game night. We're going to be playing Scrabble and Uno and Yahtzee and all the good stuff. We'll also have games for younger kids as well. The whole idea behind this, though, is in order to get in, you will need to bring two toiletry items, bars of soap, bottles of shampoo. These are going to the Twice Blessed Free Store, which is a ministry of Rocky River United Methodist Church, and it is held every Saturday down at the Nehemiah Mission in Cleveland. We worked at the Nehemiah Mission and the Twice Blessed store last year, and they said one of their most desperate needs every week is for toiletries, because that is something that the residents of the area cannot get with their food stamps. So a couple of the kids from the youth group said, we've got to do something about it. People bringing in their donations of a couple of shampoo bottles from a hotel room are not cutting it for these residents. So please, if, if you can't bring a shampoo bottle or whatever to get in, cash donations are accepted, and the youth are also going to be baking. So there will be a bake sale available as well, and those proceeds will go to buy additional toiletry items for the residents who benefit from the Twice Blessed Free Store. So we hope to see you. You'll actually get to meet some of the kids that mostly are at second service, um, but we have a very lively youth group. They're very lit up about this event, so we, we hope to see you in two weeks. Um, as you know, we have our 190th celebration on Saturday, but before that is our annual craft bazaar put on by uh, the missions. Uh, we are sold out of tables, so um, that is always a, a plus to bring all the people in. It's a buck to get in, and we are looking for some help with that. Our setup to set up the tables would be uh, Friday morning at 9 a.m., if you're able to come and help set up the tables, uh, we would love for you to do that. Takedown would be on Saturday around 3 o'clock, and we really need some help with that. In order to get ready for the celebration, we need to you know, get the crafters out and reset back up, and that takes uh, many hands. So if you're able to help uh, take down around 3 o'clock on Saturday, that would be great. Also, uh, during our, our uh, craft bazaar, we have a bake sale. So we're looking for you bakers out there to bake some delicious, yummy stuff so we can uh, uh, sell that too. Um, if you're able to help with any of this, uh, please see me or Beth Allen. We'll both be around after church. And uh, come out and, and, and check out the Craft Bazaar. It's, it's a fun time. Uh, it's, uh, we have a kitchen. We have homemade soups, homemade uh, uh, baked items also. It's a buck to get in. Make a day out of it. Come for the Craft Bazaar, then come back for the celebration at night. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, let us continue this time of worship. Good morning. Let us please stand and sing our call to worship.
Please remain standing for our opening prayer. O oh God, we join with our sisters and brothers around the world in remembering Christ's sacrifice for us, for the opportunity to eat and drink together, and for the life we have received. We give you thanks and praise. Redeem, restore, and remold us until we have made new. Transform our daily bread into the bread of life and the cup that we drink into the cup of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing for hymn 155. We are going to sing verses 1, 3, 4, and 6. be seated. Well, today we gather here with joy on this World Communion Sunday, an opportunity for the church to recognize that we are one body, not only in this particular congregation, but throughout the world as we partake of, of the holy food uh, with our Christian brothers and sisters throughout the world. So this is definitely a, a time of celebration. Um, another celebration I, I've been made aware of there is another octogenarian in our midst. Happy birthday to Jim White today. And Nancy Gavin, I'm not going to say that again. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Nancy. Happy birthday to you. It is really a joy, you know, when we go on vacation, we often go to worship at, at other churches. And, and after, as I was sitting there in worship this past Sunday, I realized how incredibly blessed um, I am as a pastor. We are as a church family to come here with the, with the joy and everything. That was a great, great worship last week, but uh, it's always fun to get back home. So I uh, just wanted to make you aware of that, that um, y'all are fantastic. And that y'all came from South Carolina, by the way. 
Uh, but there are many concerns that, that weigh heavy upon our thoughts and deep within our souls as well. So we need to lift those up. We, we had a, another tragedy in our nation here this past week with, with the, uh, the, the killing of so many out in Oregon. We pray for uh, the victim's family. We also pray for the perpetrator of that. Uh, also for the, uh, the, the, the sailors that have been lost out in, the, out in the ocean here as a result of the hurricane or unknown whereabouts. Um, also, so many others have been killed here throughout the world. We, we really need to, to lift the, these folks up in prayer and, uh, and as a church, uh, as one body, uh, rise up and do something about it as well. Um, please note those on the prayer list. Are there any that you would like to add here this morning? Thank you. I have a concern for my grandson, his wife, and their unborn child. The first uh, pictures show there's major problems, so we need prayers for Aaron, Ashley, and the unborn child. And they're going to take further tests and another sonogram. On the happier side, <laughs> I had the opportunity to attend my high school's class's 65th anniversary dinner Friday night. All right. Some came in wheelchairs, some came with walkers, some came with canes, and some walked in. That's I walked good. in with my cane and I had a ball. <laughs> That's good stuff. Good stuff. Are there others? If uh, we could just keep Kayla Clark in your prayers, she's, uh, she's about seven years old. She's got cystic fibrosis, but right now she's sick with pneumonia and strep throat, too, so she needs some prayers. For Kayla? Kayla Clark. Kayla. Others? Um, I'd like to, I have a joy that Steve and I are grandparents. After 48 hours. Wow. Yeah, it was really rough. She went through a lot, but Caden... Stephen Gotzi was born last weekend, and um, she had to spend some time in the hospital, but she's now home, and Stephanie's now home, and um, everybody's doing great. So Fantastic. Congratulations, Sharon and Steve. Uh, my friend, oh, my friend uh, John Jenkins has had Crohn's, and she's had a very bad flare-up, and we need to have prayers for her so they can get some new medication for her. Prayers for Dawn. Yeah. I'd like to ask for prayers for Steve Lingle, a friend of ours who is in Fairview Hospital on a ventilator as a result of complications from very minor uh, regular testing. So please pray for him and his family. Prayers for Steve. Anyone else? That one was coming in. Let us bow our heads and lift our hearts. Lord God, thank you for the blessings of our day. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of the privilege of serving you with all that we have. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the community that we, we are a part of here at Fields and the Christian community throughout the world, Lord God. We, we give you thanks uh, for those that have risen to your call, for those, Lord God, that, that witness uh, the newness uh, that only you can offer, Lord God. We, we do confess that oftentimes we forget uh, the joy that, that you have shared with us. We oftentimes, Lord, forget that uh, you really need to be in the center of our lives every moment of our life, Lord God. And, but as we confess those things, we know that uh, by your grace, by your mercy, uh, by your redeeming, uh, that, that we have been lifted up uh, from those things that, we, that, that have kept us from you. Uh, that we may go further along the path that you have designed for us. Lord God, we gather here this day on this World Communion Sunday to, to thank you, but also, Lord, there's so many folks we need to lift up to you. The, the people in Oregon, Lord, that have lost uh, uh, lives of loved ones, we, we pray for uh, the victims' families, we, we pray for their friends, uh, we pray for the victim, we also pray for the perpetrator, Lord God, and all those that seem to have a predisposition to violence, Lord. We just pray your watch care upon them and your healing presence with them. We pray for our whole nation, Lord God, as we, as we grieve this loss. We, we do pray that, uh, that 
that your spirit may intercede in those places where, where there is hatred and darkness, Lord God, that we may never have to, that we may never, never have to uh, visualize these things again. Uh, Lord God, we do continue to pray for your world. We pray for all those that um, are devastated by violence of all kinds. We pray for those down south and out in the Atlantic, Lord God, that um, have been rained upon, uh, uh, blown upon. Uh, Lord God, we just pray uh, safe shelter for all of them. Uh, Lord God, we pray for our communities. We pray for our schools. We pray for our teachers, support staff, administrators. Lord God, we pray for our neighbors, uh, our family, our friends. Lord God, we, we just celebrate so much, celebrate new beginnings and new births, and we celebrate also uh, um, folks who are given the privilege of another year in ministry in your name. Lord God, we celebrate birthdays to all. Uh, Lord God, we lift all these people up, and especially this day, we lift up to you, Kaylin and Tom and, and Tom and Janet, for Hannah and Madeline and Sam, for Aaron and Ashley and their unborn child, for Caden, for Steve, for Sue and Calvin, for Jim, Sally, Cheryl, uh, for Dave, for Pauline, for Lauren, for Barbara, for Denby, for Paul and Joyce, for Denise, for Bev and Joe, for Gypsy, for Ted, for all those uh, friends and family that surround these people, Lord God, uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Give them hope. Uh, give them healing. Uh, give them the promise of your eternal presence with them um, and with those they love. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to ask the children to come forward for a children's chat. Good morning. I'm glad you're here this morning. Kind of fun being up here, isn't it? <laughs> no? Oh, my gosh. I remember growing up. Now, I would sneak into the United Methodist Church of Berea. I didn't think anybody knew I was there until many years later. And you know what I used to do? I used to go up on the altar because I didn't think anybody was allowed up there except people with long robes and stuff like that. I got up here, and I said, man, this is really exciting. It was. It was. And I saw there's, they had an organ, and they had all this stuff, and I said, boy, this is really amazing. And I, and I think about that today, and I think, well, it's really, sometimes we think that places like the altar and the church and all that are closed to people. But you know what? Jesus wants us to, to celebrate everything about them. That includes the altar, includes where we're sitting, and I always think of that, and I always think I'm going in another direction now. Um, going to, ever been to Cedar Point? Yeah? Cedar Point's a fun place to go, isn't it? I used to get there really, really early, before the gates opened. And I was sitting there, and I was waiting for the gate to open. I was waiting for the gate to open. When that gate finally opens, I, my heart just starts pounding because I want to go on the first ride. It always seems that way. When the gates open for the first time, you're excited. You're excited. Well, I, I think that's what God wants us to be when we come up here to church in the morning and come up here to sit. God wants us to be as excited as we are when we're in Cedar Point and the gates open and, and we're, we're on that first ride. We want to have that same feeling. And that's what God wants. God wants us to be happy. God wants us to be um, uh, celebrate. And, and enjoy God's presence. And, you know, when it, whether it's up here, whether it's at Cedar Point, whether it's at home, or even at school, you know, uh, to, to really just enjoy uh, God because God's with you all the time. Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, thank you for, for bringing us here today. Thank you for this church, and thank you for, for being with us always and opening up all kinds of doors for us and, and uh, help us to really feel the joy in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for coming up here this morning. The scripture reading today is taken from Hebrew, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. You can find this in your pew Bible on pages 1184. <clears throat> In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he had spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided uh, purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of his majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name of his inherited, his superior to theirs. It is now time for our tithes and offerings. I like to watch you, so I'm going to go out when they do the... <laughs> the opportunity to offer these gifts now before you. Bless them and multiply them to continue your ministry throughout our community and world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as his scripture is read and proclaimed, that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. The Gospel reading is from St. Mark's Gospel, the 10th chapter, beginning in the 13th verse. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. Jesus said, 
Let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Well, the disciples were just thinking they were helping Jesus out. After all, when the kids come up, you know what can happen. You know, there's a lot of questions. There can be a lot of noise. There can be a lot of laughter. They may interfere with the preaching. They may distract. They can be lively. So when Jesus saw this happening, I'd say the word indignant was the least of those words that could describe what Jesus was thinking because he saw these children coming up with so much excitement and it seemed like his disciples were dampering the, the, that excitement all together. And he broke down the barriers of joy and said, wait a minute, disciples, don't sap enthusiasm. No matter who they are, no matter what they're doing, let them in. Let them in to see me, says Jesus, as a child. And may they be radically dependent on the grace only God can give. Have you ever noticed the energy of children? I have. <laughs> we all have. They're always running. In fact, we, we always say, uh, as, we, as we get older, say, man, we can just bottle up that energy, man. We can just get, that, uh, get them, instead of running and jumping, we'd like to be able to do that too. I mean, kids are running all the time. And it's really a whole lot of fun. In church, uh, it's great to have kids. I'd love to be filled with kids. I'd love to have kids in worship running around during the preaching and all that stuff. It'd be so exciting. I don't mind that at all. Jesus says, you can have that too. You can have that same excitement that children exude for me as well. Whether you're 5, 10, 50, 20, 30, 70, 80, 90. I think the oldest one here is 99, so I hope, hopefully I caught them all. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can still have the joy. So you can hear Jesus saying, just let them in. Let them all in. Jesus was emphatic about letting everybody in, into this incredible relationship that all people have the ability to be a part of, all who seek a closer relationship with God, a relationship that can heal and transform how we look at the world and the world itself. Let them in, Jesus screamed. Let them in to the joy that heals the sin-sick soul. The joy that offers forgiveness instead of hatred. This week changed me. I don't know about you. Because now we have to mourn even the loss of more innocence. Deaths that did not have to be. We search for answers. We think about how a person is able to obtain weapons and all that kind of thing. And then we think about those who are mourning the loss of loved ones that, that were killed tragically in Oregon this past week. Pray for them and, 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 and pray for the friends of the folks. My heart also goes to those lost souls, those who feel isolated, despised. Saints, we need to pray for those who commit these acts of violence. While we consider these words of Jesus, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such as people like these belong in the kingdom of God. As I left last week, I was making neat, neat little notes about the sermon I was going to preach this Sunday. And I was really excited. I was saying, I can't wait to get back to the saints to proclaim this word of hope. But something changed. Something's different. I thought about it. And it struck me as I was praying for the, the people who lost loved ones in, in that Oregon school a few days back. I did something that was seemingly strange, and I don't know how it happened in my mind, but I started praying for the perpetrator. I prayed for the outcast. Thought about those who hung around the gates of salvation, but never knew they had an invitation to come in. Never knew that they were welcome in this place. Never knew those things. And began to harbor that in their heart to the point of anger and bitterness. And thought about this thing called grace. 
how wonderful it is, at the same time, how difficult it is to receive grace. You find grace hard to deal with? I've thought about that a lot. Grace is tough because we know we don't deserve it. You ever get a present and it's something big and massive and all that? I, I've never gotten one. I can just envision that. <laughs> and you say, I don't deserve this. Well, the same with God's grace. You know, we do something stupid and all of a sudden God says, hey, I forgive you. Go and sin no more. And you say, God, how can you do this to me, a sinner? But God does it to all of us all the time, over and over and over again. And sometimes that is a, a really uncomfortable. But I thought about grace. I thought about those who have been disenfranchised from the church, from the community. And I thought about these words of Jesus. Let the children come. Do not hinder them. For to such as these belong the kingdom of God. We have to come as children, as they say down south, wide open. But the frozen chosen would open up the Bible to 1 Corinthians 13. It's amazing how we open up the Bible sometimes to prove a point contrary to what somebody else said and said, but Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I reasoned like a child, I thought like a child. When I became an adult, I, gave, I put away my childish ways. How, preacher, does that reconcile with coming to God as a child? Because there's something different uh, between childish, is what Paul was referring to, and childlike. Being childish is not having a firm grasp on the realities of the world, of, of, of needing to learn more, to be savvy or streetwise, as, as my old sales manager used to tell me I was not at the beginning. But childlike is the way we come to God, wide open, and seeing everything about God, everything about our calling, everything that we do as an adventure. And you can't wait to get out on the adventure. It's like a child. You ever notice when a child wakes up, they just want to get going? If you don't have a, if you don't have a child, have you ever had a dog? Not to compare the two. I'm getting in trouble. I just returned back. But how excited they are about another day. That is childlike faith. When we approach our faith, with that childlike sense of adventure, that childlike sense of joy. Get away from that mature, stoic-type existence. Let our hair down and enjoy what God has to offer to us. That's what it is to live in the joy of faith as the redeemed children of God. First thing we need to do is turn back and say, God, I don't deserve what you're giving me. I don't deserve it at all. I don't know why you're giving it to me. But thank you, Jesus, for doing just that. Thank you, Lord, for making, the per making me the person that you would have me to be. Recreating my life. So as I think about the church, a couple of things happened last week. That's why I had to rip up the old sermon. I may have liked that. I might do that next week. I don't know. Pope Francis came to town. And we were catching glimpses of Pope Francis. Now, you can say what you want about the Catholic theology and all that kind of stuff. But one thing that man did was he exuded joy of faith. He made everybody that he met feel welcome. He didn't change Catholic doctrine. He didn't adjust what the scripture said. But what did he do? Let the children come to God. Open the door. Let them in. That's what he did. And that's what we need to do as church. There are people out there living on the margin. And the one thing that really bothers me is when people disparage the Christian community. Man, we need to just let them in. But sometimes we don't. Sometimes we, 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 we want to keep people away, thinking that God's not powerful enough to change even the sickest soul and make them well. We need to enter 
the kingdom. Enter this place with a childlike sense of, wow, God can change. God can shift this around. That we need to be an open gate for all those who seek a closer relationship with the one who offers us the joy of faith. We need to have that same enthusiasm that that when the gate finally opens and we run in there to see what's on the other side, we need to have that same childlike enthusiasm for our faith. And maybe those who feel marginalized, those who feel despondent, those who feel as if there's no other alternative than acts of violence. Maybe they could see that there is another way to live. That's what it's all about. That's what the church can do as we celebrate World Communion Sunday. You look at the millions and millions of Christians around the world. If we would stand up and, as one and say, you are welcome to come to this place. No matter who you are, maybe we can facilitate change in our world. You see, seeing the kingdom this way as a child, with childlike faith, will change our world. It has to. That's what we're here to witness. For it is our calling. No matter whether you're a preacher, choir, musician, volunteer, or worshiper, or anything. It is our calling to open up the door for those who desperately need Christ in their life. Jesus welcomed children not just of chronological age, but all of us. Welcome, saints, the children, the despised, the sick, the condemned, the convicted, the outcast, the lonely, the searching, the poor, the sick, the misunderstood, and all those who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. If we are honest with ourselves, each of us would fit into one or more of those categories. So what can we do as church? We can let them in. We can witness a childlike faith, a faith of of enthusiasm, of hope, of renewal. Witness a childlike faith. I was thinking about this too, and I know we got to get the communion and everything else, but I was thinking about all the people that Jesus healed. You, you, go back and read, especially Matthew, that around the 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth chapter of Matthew. What you'll find with people who were healed by Jesus, they came up with a childlike faith. They just wanted Jesus in their life. They just wanted Jesus to heal them. And they knew that Jesus would. just as a child has faith in those who care for them. Jesus cares for us in that same way. Can we change the world? God's calling us to. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the calling. We give you thanks, Lord, for a childlike faith Bless us, nurture us, enliven our souls. May we bottle up the enthusiasm of others 
And may we share that enthusiasm for you with the world around us. Lord, we do pray for those that feel so isolated that they just do terrible things, Lord. May we do your work. Make them feel welcome. Open the gate and let them in. Amen. I'd like to invite those who be helping with communion to please come forward and stand on either side. And as you come forward, this is World Communion Sunday, and we will be offering Holy Communion at the four corners of the sanctuary. And so uh, go as the ushers direct. And as it is World Communion Sunday, there are, there are breads from the world uh, that, that are part of this. Uh, tortilla for Mexico, uh, pumpernickel for Germany, sweet bread for the South Pacific Islands, and potato bread for Ireland. So as we gather here, we gather here by God's grace, by God's mercy. This is not the table of Fields United Methodist Church, nor the United Methodist Church. This is the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And throughout the world, we recognize all people come to the table of the Lord as one body in Christ. And this table is so large, it goes not only to this temporal life, but we also partake communion with those uh, who are worshiping now in the great church triumphant. So it's a big group of people, and we celebrate that. Let us begin this time of Holy Communion with the prayer of confession and pardon. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us and for all God's creation. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us continue with the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ, whom you send in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those whom you fear. On a night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, blessed it, and broke it, and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. When the supper had ended, he took the cup. 
again giving thanks to you, blessed it and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Lord God, since we are surrounded by so many wonderful people here and in your church, great triumphant, Lord God, bless and sanctify us all this day that by your spirit we may be made one with you and one with each other in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this gift of eternal life, that as we partake of this holy food with one another throughout the world, that we may become one with you. Bless us, keep us, sanctify us, and offer us peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us stand and sing together our hymn of imitation number 624. Now may the love of God, the peace and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us now, even to the end of the age. Amen.